So once again, we will pick two ratios to cross multiply. And these are the only two we can pick. I can't pick C over sine C because I have no information there. So if we cross multiply over on the left, we have 8 times sine B equals 5 times sine 36. So what I want to do is I want to divide by 8 to get sine B by itself. So if I type that in my calculator, I'm going to type in 5 sine 36, and then I'm going to divide it by 8. And what happens is you get a you get a decimal, which is good. So we're going to round that to three decimal places. That's 0.367. When you are solving for an angle, you have to use the inverse function. So sine negative 1, 0.367. So if we type that in our calculator, we end up with 21. So big B, or the angle, equals 21.55. So big B is 21.55. Now, you've got two angles, so if you add those together and subtract from 180, you already have C. You don't have to do the angle again. Once you find C, solve for little c, and you have your triangle. All right, law of cosine. Okay, law of cosine. If you have three angles, you just kind of pick. So if we use A first, we want to solve for cosine A. That's 11 squared, b squared, plus c squared. I'll just go ahead and fill this in instead of writing all that out. 15 squared plus 21 squared minus 2 times 15 times 21 cosine a. Now, you've got to be very careful how you solve this, okay? Let's take it one piece at a time. So let's start with 11 squared. 11 squared is 121. I'm going to go ahead and do 15 squared plus 21 squared because I basically want to break this up into this and this. Okay, you got to think about those as two separate things. So 15 squared plus 21 squared is 666, six, six, which is not a nice number. Okay, we're going to get rid of it soon. That's funny. Not really. 2 times 15 times 21. So we get minus 630 cosine A. Now what I have to do, okay, this negative 630 is attached to cosine A. So you can't do 666 minus 630. We have to subtract this over first. And we'll move this over here. So 121 minus, we get negative 545 equals negative 630 cosine A. That's how it has to look. Now we will divide by negative 630 to get cosine A by itself. So divided by 630. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take cosine. So we got cosine A equals negative 0.865. Remember, we're solving for an angle, so we use the inverse. So cosine and we get 149.9. So A equals 149.9. And then you can go on and about your business with the rest of them, okay? The one below that, okay, the one below that, we would need to start here and here start here and here with these and what we need to do is we would need to solve for a squared first so what that means is do everything we did above that but once I get a squared by itself take the square root of both sides okay take the square root of both sides oh looky here a mistake ignore this Teachers, please pardon the interruption we need any senior that would like to participate in a senior farewell video to please report to Coach Long's classroom at this time. Thank you. Let's look back up here. Okay, this is a good this is a good teaching tool. Okay, a minute ago I did a negative divided by a negative, and I left it a negative, which we know is not true. So when I do a negative by divided by a negative, that's going to be a positive. So cosine a is going to equal point. 865, not negative. So go back, correct that. My mistake on that one. 
So we'll do shift cosine 0.865. So shift cosine answer. Ah, this makes a lot more sense. Okay, this makes a lot more sense here. Uh, so we'll get 30.1 uh, degrees, which makes sense. That other one didn't make sense. And the reason why is because I didn't change my sign. So there you go. All right, let's look at this problem here. I'll show you how to do a squared, and then you can figure out the rest. So we don't know a squared, but I have to find a squared because I've got big A. So that's going to be 3 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 3 times 14 times cosine 48. Now listen, I've got no variables on this side over here, none whatsoever. So what that allows me to do, that allows me to type it straight in my calculator. So 3 squared plus 14 squared. I'm going to type it in just like I have it, parentheses and all. Minus 2 times 3 times 14 times cosine 48. And what you end up with is you end up with a squared equals 148.79. Like I mentioned earlier, we'll take the square root of both sides. So the square root is 12.2. Two, and that is little a. So little a is 12.2. Go through, figure out the rest of your triangle. On your final, you're only going to be asked to solve one piece. So as long as you have your equation set up based on the piece you need, this is pretty much all you're going to be doing is looking for one. Inverse functions, okay? Basically, inverse functions mean one thing. You're going to be given the coordinate, find the angle, okay? The key here is you got to know with the range. Arc sine can only be on this half of the unit circle and it goes negative so really this is going to be negative 30 negative 45 and negative 60 and this is negative 90 that's how it works okay that's how arc sine works that's also how arc tan works arc cosine is the top half which is no negative so you don't have to worry about it so it's the top half of your circle so if I'm looking for arc cosine square root of 2 over 2, cosine is the x-coordinate, so where is cosine square root of 2 over 2? 45. Does it fall within the green? Yes, it does, so our answer is 45, or pi over 4, depending on what it's asking, okay? Pi over 4. All right, tangent 1. Tangent 1 is when we have two angles that are the same, so that would be the square root of 2 over 2. It's in the blue here. We can't look at this one because that's not in our range. So we don't we ignore that one. We look here, okay? And that answer is also pi over 4. Arc sine, if you have some of this non-unit circle, you just simply type in my calculator sine negative 1 of what you're given. So if I type that in, sine negative 1 of 0.892, we get 63.1. Okay, so that would be our answer there in degrees. Same goes for the rest of these problems. Here what you would need to do is we would need to rationalize my denominator first and get arc sine squared of 2 over 2. Now let's say this was negative for some reason. Negative squared of 2 over 2 is down here. So instead of being in positives, we're going to be in the negative. So remember it goes negative 30 negative 45, so this would be negative pi over 4. Remember, they work both ways. All right, this was, you know, one of the hardest ones, simplifying tree expressions. Here's some basic operations to look for, adding, subtracting, multiplying, separating fractions. Always try to factor, start with the GCF, look for difference of squares or trinomial. Use your fundamental identities, which is the reciprocal and reciprocal identities and Pythagorean, those are our uh, fundamental ones. Try to change everything in terms of sine and cosine, okay? Uh, and and, it, and if all else fails, you just gotta try something, okay? We gotta try something. All right, so let's look at a couple problems. An example here, okay? Mathematically, I can't subtract that, but I have a GCF of tan squared. So if I factor that out, get a tan squared to the outside, that's gonna be one minus sine squared. Now I can't do anything else to it so let's change it. Tangent okay, is sine squared over cosine squared. And if you look at your identities here, cosine squared 
is the same thing as 1 minus sine squared, which is what I have right here. So we'll change this to cosine squared. And remember, that's really over 1. So now, look, we cross out. We're left with sine squared. There's our answer. Over here is another example. This is a difference of squares. Okay, You may look at it and think, oh, well, I want to change it to tangent or 1 plus tangent or whatever. But this won't, that won't help you here. But if you do your difference of squares, secant x plus 1, secant x minus 1, you will see that one of these secants minus 1's cancel, and we're left with secant x plus 1, which would be my simplified version. All right, here we got three terms. So that means we want to factor. So what multiplies the 2 that adds a negative 3? Well, that's sine x plus 1. I take that back. It's minus 1 because it's negative, sine x minus 1, and sine x minus 2. And we can't do anything else, so we would leave it. All right, here's some examples of where changing it would be best. So if I change it, okay, cotangent is cosine x over sine x. Secant is 1 over cosine x. That leaves us with 1 minus sine x, and 1 minus sine x is cosecant x. All right, uh, this one here, you know, you, it might be best to distribute it. So let's say if I distribute, that's going to be sine theta cosecant theta minus sine squared theta. Let's bring it up here. Let's change cosecant theta to one min, uh, one over sine theta minus sine squared theta. These two cancel, so we got 1 minus sine squared theta left because, like I said, when these two cancel, you're left with that 1 right there. And then if I look right here, what is 1 minus sine squared? Well, that is cosine squared. This one here might be the best to try to separate it first and then change everything to sine and cosine. This one here is going to be best to find a common denominator and then combine into one fraction and then change and go about it that way. So those are some examples. I'll leave those for you. You've got plenty of worksheets and other work to look at as well with that. All right, using sum and difference, so we're going to be looking down here at sine and cosine. Remember, sine is the same cosine. When it's positive, it's actually negative in the middle, so remember to be wary of that. Sine 75, if we're using the sum, uh, we can say that's really sine 30 plus 45. So if we're looking at sine, we're using plus, so it's going to be plus, so that's going to be sine, ooh, sine 30 cosine 45 plus cosine 30 sine 45. That's what you're going to be looking for in that equation. All right, cosine negative 30, uh, you could do, uh, you know, angles that minus like 120 minus 150. Um, 90 minus, I mean 60 minus 90, there's all kinds of things you can look at for this one. Let's look in on these because these are some of the good ones. These are definitely being your final. Uh, it's, it's still using the identities except now we, we, we're going to have an actual answer uh, as far as, you know, it's going to be left with sine or cosine. So if we look at our formula, we're using sine, we're using the plus, so we can make this x, which is good because it is, and we'll make this y. So if we do that, we'll have sine x cosine pi over 2 plus sine pi over 2 cosine x. So if you refer to your unit circle, so you're going to go back to your unit circle. So let's see if we can't find our unit circle up here somewhere. Uh, we'll just stop right here. Okay, At pi over 2, all right, so here's x and here's y. So cosine is 0 and sine is 1. So remember that, cosine 0, sine 1. So here cosine is 0, so sine x times 0. Sine is 1, so make that a 1. Well, anything times 0 is just 0. And then 1 times cosine is cosine x, so your answer would be cosine x. So you want to do the same thing on 